Welcome to Joyous Living Today. My name is Bill Odom. And I'm Tammy Odom. And I want to invite you again to get your Bible. We're going to be reading from Numbers chapter 13. And get pencil and paper as well, because sometimes you'll get a truth out of the Word of God, or maybe not even what we're talking about. The Spirit of God can speak something to you, and you want to write it down so that you can remember it for later. This book is full of of the nuggets of truth of God's Word that will cause us to be set free. Amen. You know, Bill's going to be teaching about how to take your promise, how to receive it. So be sure and stay and listen to his um, message. But first, we are going to be singing a song called Speak the Word, Lord, and Your Servant Will Go. Amen. Praise God. Enjoy the program today. It's a foreign battlefield where I finally find you will. Lord, then that's where I long to be. In the desert without a dream or some old shield about to sing. Lord, I'll go ill. You just stay. Yeah. 
Praise God, we've been talking in the past about the accomplishments of the Lord Jesus Christ, what He came to earth to do. And uh, you know, there's so many things that Jesus did for us when He came to this earth. Of course, the most important thing was that He died for our sins, shed His blood. He made a way for us to go to heaven. He healed our bodies, according to 1 Peter 2.24. And according to Isaiah 53, the Bible says that with His stripes, and in the Old Testament it said, with His stripes we are healed. And in the New Testament it says, by His stripes we were healed. Yes. So if we were something, if it was a, a past tense accomplishment, that means it's already a done deal. So again, that was an accomplishment that the Lord Jesus Christ came to do. He also came to bring our joy to us. He came that we might have fullness of joy. Uh, and you know, the joy of the Lord, the Bible says, is our strength. So sometimes we go through life and we just feel weak and and like we can't accomplish anything. But if you'll just turn to the joy of the Lord that Jesus came to bring to us, then our strength will be accomplished. And He came to make us children of God. It says in, in John chapter 1 that to Him that received Him, He gave them the power to become the sons of God. The Bible says He came to bring us life and life more abundantly. In other words, not just a life that is just surviving, just getting by, but Jesus came in John 10, 10, that we might have life and have it abundantly. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is going to go perfect all the time, but it does mean that if you're going through anything right now, that what Jesus did for you in bringing life to you, that you will get out of the situation that you're in, if you will trust in what Jesus came to do. Now he said it, he came to bring us victory. He said he caused us to triumph. It says that we are complete in Him. So praise God, Jesus came and brought us all these things and all these glorious things that we read about, all the promises that we're told about. And everything that Jesus did, He did for you and He did for me because Jesus didn't need it. He was in heaven. He was there surrounded with angels and surrounded with streets paved with gold and walls of jasper. And, and gates of pearl. So Jesus didn't need these things. He already had them. What He did when He came to this earth, didn't do for Himself. He did for you and He did it for me so that we could receive that abundant life that we just told you about. Now, we've been talking to you about the legal side of what Jesus came to do, which is what He did on Calvary, what He did through His blood, what He did in the resurrection, that's the legal side, because Jesus had to come to this earth as a man to accomplish what He did for you and me. See, he was, He's God, but He had to come to this earth as a man and legally purchase for us these things that He did because we could not do it for ourselves because we had sin in our lives. Now, we've been reading about the Roman centurion, where the Roman centurion came to Jesus and he understood Jesus' authority. He said, Jesus, I'm a man under authority just like you are. And, and I say to one go, and he goes, and one to come, and he comes. And I understand authority. Now, today, we have that authority that's been given to us by Jesus according to Mark, Matthew 28, 18. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Well, Jesus, before he came to earth, already had authority. So why is he saying then that now all authority has been given unto him? He came as a man and he gained the authority in heaven and in earth because he came as a man and he purchased the authority as a man for men, for you and for me. So now, like the Roman centurion, when he says as a, as a soldier, he would tell one man to do something and another man to do something and they would obey him. Now, it's not, that's not the authority that we have today to tell men and women what to do, but our authority is to speak to things that are contrary to the Word of God. Speak to things in our life and have the authority over things in our life that are trying to bring us down. That's what Jesus came to do, was bring us the authority to set us free from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of penalty of sin, so that we can go free, praise God. Yes. So that's what we're discussing now. The legal side that Jesus came and purchased our redemption. 
He purchased our healing. He, he purchased our deliverance. He purchased our, our freedom. He, he purchased our joy, our peace. So now it belongs to us. Well, you might say, well, well praise God, I, Brother Odom, I, I hear what you're saying and I believe it. So how come I'm not experiencing it in my life? Well, see, that believing is the first step. And we're going to get into some things again today. We talked last week. We left the program talking about the children of Israel. And Tammy, you know, uh, the, the situation is that, that the children of Israel, which was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob was the name was changed to Israel. So mm -hmm. now his children were in captivity in Egypt. The story goes that Joseph was one of uh, Israel's children. He went in to Egypt because they were having a, a problem. His brother sold him into slavery and God set it up that Joseph would go into Egypt and, and of course Joseph was set up to where he could bring deliverance to his family and then the children of Israel moved into Egypt but then after 430 years they found themselves as slaves. They found themselves in a government that was taking over and, and actually enslaving them and causing them to do hard labor. And God promised that he was going to deliver them. So after 430 years of captivity in Egypt, now God is saying, and He sent a man named Moses to deliver them yeah. out of Egypt and bring them into a yes. land that He had promised them. That was the land of Canaan. Now, Tammy, I'm going to ask you if you would to read. We're going to be reading now from Numbers chapter 13. We're going to start in verse 1. And for sake of time, we're going to skip over some of the genealogy here and, uh, and men's names so that we can get into the meat of what we're, what we're discussing. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And when Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, all these men were heads of the children of Israel. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and to the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the con congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless... The people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are wild and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites. Yeah, Amalekites <laughs> dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with them said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which ye have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which came, which come of the giants. And we were in our, our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children shall be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And you know, that, Tammy, when we're reading this, I see such a parallel to the church today. Um, there were 12 spies or 12 men that Moses chose to go into this promised land. Now, the reason it's called the promised land because if you read there in, in verse number 1 and 2, God said, send men in to the land that I give them. In other words, this land of Canaan, this promised land that we're talking about, had already been given to the children of Israel by promise. So therefore, it was a gift to them. It belonged to them already. Yes. It wasn't something that God said, I'm going to give this to you if you do such and such. He said, I have already given you this land. 
Now the parallel here that we're trying to accomplish today is to let you see, first of all, when, when the crossing over Jordan, for any of you that's been in church for, for many years at all, you've heard that when you cross over Jordan, that's a, that's a type or that's a symbolism of people that when they die going to heaven. But that cannot be the case because the Bible says plainly here that there were giants in the land. There were enemies there. There were battles that the children of Israel were going to have to fight to take possession of this land that God had promised them. And we know that there's not giants in heaven. We know that there's not walled cities in heaven. We know that there's not going to be battles to fight in heaven. We're fighting the battles while we're here on earth. But see, God did give them this land by promise. He said, it's yours. Now go in and take possession of it. That, that's what he told them to do. He said, go in and possess the land that I have given you. Now, Again, the parallel is to what Jesus has done for us, the promises that Jesus has done for us. He's given us these things. We spoke a while ago that by His stripes we were healed. It's not something that is going to happen. It's something that has already happened. Jesus has already healed us according to His Word. Jesus has already come. He died on the cross, He shed His blood, He was raised from the dead, and then He made access, just like they had access to the promised land to take possession of it, Jesus has given access to the things of God that He wants us to have. The, the Holy Spirit and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave us access to those things. But we have got to go in and take possession of them. Amen. It's up to us to go into this land and possess it. Now again, I parallel that with the church today. There was 10 or 12 men that went in. 10 came back and the Bible says that it was, and I believe it's in verse 32, it said they brought back an evil report. Yes. Now what's evil about the fact that God said, I've given you this land. This land is a land that flows with milk and honey. And these men, when, when they went in, in, in verse number 23, it talks about how they cut down a cluster of grapes and it took two men to bring a cluster of these grapes in. That's how, how much this land flowed with, with the glory of God and what God had prepared for them. Tammy, you know, we, we went and looked at a house the other day that had a grapevine on it. <laughs> and, you know, we, we, we had to kind of hunt to see the grapes that were on that vine because it hadn't been well cared for and, and for whatever reason, it just hadn't been maintained. But we see here that this, these grapes that they found were so huge that again, that it took two men to bring them back. So the evil report could not have been that it didn't have fruit in it. The evil report could not have been that it didn't flow with milk and honey because they agreed with that. They said, yes, this land is a good land. Mm -hmm. It's just like God said, it's a good land. But, 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 <laughs> but. and that, that's what we hear today so much. People, mm -hmm. I, I've had a couple of people come to me with this program and it's like, yeah, Bill, but, you know, no, there, there's no buts to this thing. Jesus came and gave us life and gave it more abundantly. So, so praise God, it belongs to us. But see, there's still giants that we face today. There's an enemy out there. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the time, the enemy is people that are right around you that are telling you that you can't have what God said you could have. And Bill, why would God tell us to go in and take something that He knew we couldn't take or we couldn't have? Amen. That's ridiculous to even to even think that. He, when He tells us we can have it, it doesn't matter what the circumstances or the giants look like, we can have it. So we need to remember what His Word says, what He says, Amen. and not look at what we see with our eyes. Amen, that's right, Tammy. I, you know, uh, when, now, now I try to put myself in their position. And, and, you know, when you go in and you, and, you know, what if I'd have been one of the spies or what if I'd have been one of the people that were standing there listening to the report of the spies? And you go in and you look and, and, and here you've got the Word of God. Now that's what we're talking about. We've got, they had the Word from God. I've given you this land. It belongs to you. Yeah. But they went in and they saw these giants there. And immediately they knew that there was going to be an obstacle that was going to stand between them and possessing that land that God had promised them. And, you know, I try again, try to put myself there. What would I do? But see, 
That's what we're facing today. What, what if you go to the doctor and the doctor tells, gives you a, a report? You know, here it says an evil report was one they brought back that basically said, no, God said it, there's a land flowing with milk and honey, said he's given it to us, but we can't get it. Well, what if somebody comes to you and brings you back a report? What if your bank account all of a sudden comes back zero? What, what if the doctor tells you of some kind of disease that you have? And there are some of you out there I know, I, I know by the Spirit of God that are watching this program right now that drugs has just about consumed your life. And you're hearing what I'm talking about today. Mm -hmm. And you want to be free from that. And because of, of the giant that's there, the giant, the people that tell you that you can't overcome that, the people that tell you that you're going to be doomed to that thing. Mm -hmm. Like Tammy said, that, that you see that obstacle that's in the way. You see the circumstance there that just looks like it's insurmountable. But I'm here to tell you today, and that's what this program is about. Joyous living today. I'm telling be you free. that you can, you can overcome anything. Mm -hmm. There is not anything that God has not done for you. What Jesus, we've said this time and time again, what Jesus did on the cross was enough to take care of any problem or any situation that you're facing in this life. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's the fact that you've got a pain in your thumb, if it's arthritis in your body. I don't care what it is, if it's a financial burden that's on you, that you feel like that you just absolutely can't overcome. I'm here to tell you today that the word, that's a giant. But God said that He has overcome it for you by the blood of Jesus. Praise God. So glory to God if you're here and facing anything in this life. Don't listen to the ten that came back and said, we can't do it. There was two men, Joshua and Caleb, that came back and Caleb said, we're well able. Why could he say we're well able? Because he believed God. He did not believe... Now, now understand, when it's, you know, we think about evil as doing a lot of things. There's all kinds of sins out there in the world that people think is evil. But the Bible says here that they brought back an evil report. That evil report was not believing what God said or believing these, the circumstances over what God said about something. Yeah. We beg you, believe the Word of God. What God said and what Jesus did is greater than your problem. Yeah. Now praise God, it, it may be drugs, it may be alcohol, it may be several things that could be plaguing you, but we're, here, we're going to pray for you right now. And we want you to do what, not what the ten did, we want you to do what the two did. We want you to believe God. We want you to stand and say, no, I'm not going to let this thing overwhelm me and take control of my life. I believe God. And I believe what Jesus did for me is greater than this drug problem, is greater than this financial problem, is greater than this depression. Yes. What Jesus did on the cross okay. is greater than any problem yes. that I will face in this life. Praise God. Yes. Now, Tammy, if you would, would you pray for the folks right now? Praise the Lord. Lord, we just come to you today. And Father God, we thank you for all your blessings. And God, we thank you for sending your son yes, to die yes, for us. Yes, thank you. And Father. Lord, not just dying to set us free from our sins, but to set everyone free from every sickness and disease, from everything, uh, whether it's drugs or alcohol. It can be pornography, any kind yes, that's right. of anything, that's right. addiction or anything that people have bound in their life. God, I ask you in Jesus' name to set them free for Jesus died on the cross many years ago for these folks to be set free. And Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name to just deal with people's hearts that you would draw them to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Now, we're going to go into a song right now, and we'll be back just in a few minutes. Bill, we're going to do um, the old rugged cross is up next. And if you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, then I pray that you do as you listen to this song, the old rugged cross. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Cross, the emblem of suffering and shame, and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. 
So I'll cherish the old rugged old Tell my trophies at last I lay down And I will cling to the old rugged old And exchange it someday Shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me away to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll share. Praise God. I hope that song was a blessing to you. That's an old, old song that uh, we have song. sung for many, many years. And, uh, you know, the old rugged cross is something that without that, without the blood of Jesus, there's no way to receive eternal life. There's no way that we can make it to heaven without that. Amen. And it's the blood, not just the blood of the cross, but it's the blood that came through the Lord Jesus yes. Christ dying on the cross. Yes. The way that you get saved, the way that you're born again, you just simply by believing in that blood, believing that Jesus died on the cross, believing that God raised Jesus from the dead. And the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead, that you will be saved. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Well, folks, we're out of time, and Bill will be continuing this message next yes. week. So we'll see you next time. Praise God. Yeah.